This warning in effect until 5:45 p.m. Expecting winds up to 60 miles per hour and some small hail associated with this severe thunderstorm. Right Again, hail too, getting in on some pretty heavy rainfall, lightning strikes. Wouldn't be surprised to see some small hail with this as well, and winds in excess of 30 miles per hour. I Another too, this one wrapping in around Pender County, up to two inches of rain per hour, and this is on top of places that have already seen a foot of rain. So I mean, continuing to add on to that, I wouldn't be surprised if some folks are over two feet yeah. uh, once all is said and done. But yeah, again, signature here is called a hook echo, and that's kind of where a tornado really wraps up tightly, and that's what we're seeing here. Stay safe uh, on your commute home. We move a little bit up north too into portions of Pender County, Burgos, seeing lots of lightning strikes, moderate to very heavy rainfall there. This impacting portions of I-40 through that area, so Burga down to Rocky Point. Uh, this one also storm to make a big impact, and Florence will be that storm. More Latest details. Hurricane wind. Florence still a Category One hurricane. This is from the latest 5 p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Winds right now at 85 miles per hour. The gusts upwards of 100 Stalled near or just over Southeast North Carolina. That will come into play with life threatening flooding and storm surge. Keep that in mind. If you are in a mandatory place, all that of our area right now is in that cone of uncertainty. So what that means is the cone of uncertainty is where the center of the storm will be. So it's kind of a wide variety all across North South Carolina. Don't want to completely discount Virginia, Georgia, North Florida. All these folks should be paying close attention to where this is going to track. So it could still move a little bit north, a little bit south. That's kind of what we're going to be fine tuning for the next couple of days. That will play into what we get here in Southeast North Carolina in terms of impact. So, so check out this band on the back side of that system. Significant heavy rainfall. Not only do we worry about that, though, the tornado threat will still be in increasing too. Isolated spin up tornadoes will be possible, but notice winds still at 80 miles. The main day, the main impact day will be on Thursday. Tropical storm force conditions for areas further inland, such as Bladen, Columbus County and Hurricane County conditions, likely areas along the beaches. So that includes Pender County, Brunswick County, New Hanover County. By Friday, we'll see a little bit of this linger in the morning and then get much better as we head throughout the afternoon and evening. Folks along our Brunswick County beach is likely going to be seeing these winds really pick up soon. And then they'll Bald Head Island, Southport, Oak Island, really, really taking a hit right now in terms of rain and in terms of wind. So we really about you can't that. even tell how deep that water is there. We do have kind of some of a little bit of a reference there kind of coming up to the back bumper of that truck there and the front of that car. So so again, this is going to say that if you don't know how deep that water is, you're out driving, do not drive through that. This could quickly sweep away uh, any car that tries to drive through it, not knowing how deep it is. Oh, Talking really about large waves here and the waves coming up, you know, pretty far. Now keep in mind, we're at low tide right now. We still have a whole nother tidal cycle to go through, especially during Alex out at Wrightsville Beach. Good call to pull her in, yeah. I think, to get her out of those conditions, right? Right, very, especially along our beaches. And, you know, we're coinciding that with high tide coming at around 1.30 this morning. Um, and that will kind of just influence the storm surge factor, uh, you know, depending on the timing of, you know, how far northeast story and keeps on going and the timing of the high tide cycles will further influence and enhance. Tilly McGlynn is live in Burga right now. What are you seeing now, Kel? Yeah, so within the past maybe like five, 10 minutes, the rain has picked up, but I am starting to see some legitimate snowflakes mixing in. And we did get a report too um, up in Watha, which is just north of us, that snow was starting to mix in with that rain as well. And let me tell you, it is frigid outside. Right now it's around 34 degrees here in Burga, feeling like the middle and lower 20s. So you factor that in with all this moisture that's on the ground. You betcha you're going to see some slick spots late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Right, However, the National Weather Service, they've been saying that they've been seeing some reports of some sleet pellets mixing in with that rain near Hallsboro and Whiteville. So again, if you have any reports to pass along, we'd love to hear it. You are our eyes out there. If you see anything, be sure to let us know. And in terms of the difference between sleet and freezing rain, freezing rain is rain that freezes when it hits the surface. We're not expecting that in this typical situation here. If you hear any sleet, we say sleet makes a beat. It's that ticking noise. So if you hear that, make sure to report it to us and we'll send it out to uh, other folks across the area spreading the message on when that transition will happen later on this evening. But for right now, the plunge of Arctic air moves down some of the coldest air of the season likely. Uh, it has been a wet and windy weekend. Rainfall totals over the past 24 hours, anywhere between an inch, inch and a half, two inches, even two and a half inches in some spots. 
and we continue to add on to these totals as we head throughout the overnight hours tonight and going into your Monday as well. Already at a record breaking rainfall amount this year at 97.67 inches. The normal value through December 9th is around 55 inches. So we're about double that and we have more showers in your seven day to talk about after we get through these showers that we're dealing with now. However, a little bit of a dry spell for right now. Some drier air punching in on the backside of this, giving us a little bit of a break from that heavy rainfall we've been Tomorrow, seeing miles per hour. Patchy fog possible in the morning as well. And as we head into the afternoon, temperature is not growing too much. Many of us reaching the lower 60s tomorrow. Again, cloud coverage continues. And then as we head into Wednesday, a few more showers moving in there on shore. Overall, not a washout heading into Thursday, but now we're going to start to warm back up again. Back to southwest winds. A little bit elevated too ahead of the next cold front. This will be a stronger cold front. Already going to say I have the control. I have the control. Put a little bit left. Left. Easy. <laughs> I see how sensitive it it's is. Very now. sensitive. Okay, so let's try to make a left turn here at the beach. We'll just kind of follow the beach if we can here. Okay. So just look over to the left. Whoa! Look at that. <laughs> this is good, right? <laughs> oh this is good, right? <laughs> Can you take me back to the airport? Yeah. You know where it is? Nope. <laughs> I don't know anything about those games, but I'll say my kids love these kind of video games. Yes, I'm glad you're doing that transition because my video gaming stopped right at Nintendo 64, so I didn't know how I was going to kind of get into the weather. Mine was Atari with a joystick <laughs> and one button. Nintendo 64 all the way with Mario Kart. That was a thing to do. These days, who knows? It's limitless of what, the, what they're doing today. Not my expertise, but here's my expertise here. Meteorology and your weather forecast moving forward. Transitioning now to what to expect over the next couple of days. Going to start off with your cloud feature radar model. Had a front move through earlier today. Brought a few showers. Could see a little bit more of those again as this front's going to stall a little bit off the coast. Then move back north as an area of low pressure is going to be developing off that front. Bringing a better chance, more of a widespread chance for showers and storms on your Wednesday. So here we go, moving over in a Tuesday into Wednesday. Wednesday morning. See a few clouds starting to stream back in as we head into the morning. Here's where most of that precip will be early tomorrow morning. Most of us starting off with plenty of cloud cover. Low chance for an isolated shower or storm, but as this front continues to move north, that area of low pressure that's going to develop on it's going to continue to move to the north and northeast as well. So here's 3 p.m. Wednesday. The bulk of this now, this model showing it still back to our west, but moving into around drive time. So around 4 or 5 o'clock is when this is going to move through southeastern North Carolina. There could be some very heavy downpours associated with this as well. So we'll have to look out for the potential for some localized poor drainage flooding. However, we do need the rain, so it's good that this is coming. By Thursday morning, most of this has moved out of the area. We're left with some cloud cover too. But as we move into the afternoon, things will start to break up and from there on out, we'll start to turn drier and hotter too as we head into your weekend. Here's your radar loop from the past to five, six hours or so as that front moves through now offshore. Lingering shower to right now we're across the Cape Fear region, but nothing really sticking out to us uh, across the area and further verifying that too as we get you outside from our newest motors first alert sky camera network. Rachel Beach on your left hand side starting to see some uh, breaks in the clouds there. Lots of folks out on the beaches right now enjoying the dry time. Elizabeth Town on your right hand side still seeing some clouds there. A little bit of a breeze too, swaying through the trees along the street. Streets. However, temperatures you've noticed today cooler than yesterday thanks to that cold front that had worked through. Right now, most of us sitting in the middle upper 70s, near 80 right in North Myrtle Beach. Port City, you're checking in at 77. Elizabethtown, 76. So most of us uh, seeing a difference in those temperatures were actually, look at those, 24 hours ago. Notice anywhere from 3 to nearly 11 degrees cooler thanks to that cold front that worked through. And we are expecting some cooler temperatures tomorrow. Again, a few showers and storms associated with that as well, but then we will be trending much drier and hotter as we get into the weekend. Taking you quick out to the tropics along the Atlantic Basin. We are 11 days now into the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season. Nothing really catching our eye here. Good news there. Of course, you can always stay up to date with everything on your WBCT mobile weather app. So here's your short term forecast through Thursday. Notice tomorrow, uh, or actually for the rest of today, a low chance for a shower or a storm, but then those odds increase as we head into Wednesday. Explain this out to your full set seven days hotter and drier as we make our way into the weekend. We'll be right back. But you actually put yourself in one of those strong currents on purpose, right? 
Yeah, that's right, John. And you know, with safety, our number one priority, we had Riceville Beach Ocean Rescue with us the entire time that we were in that strong current. And you know, with beach season in full effect right now, many people coming out to the beach thinking, you know, sharks are the number one thing they need to look out for. But really, you need to be looking out for these powerful rip currents. And in this demonstration I'm about to show you, you will see just how strong that current is. They are one of the deadliest dangers at the beach, ranking in the top three weather-related fatalities in the U.S. since 2013. Lifeguards call them drowning machines, and that's because they're extremely efficient at what they do. They are rip currents. A rip current basically is like a treadmill that's in the surf zone. What happens is they stay on that treadmill, they get tired, and then they go under because they have no more energy to stay afloat. And regardless of how strong of a swimmer you are, you will never be strong enough to beat that rip current of that flow of water moving out. Rip currents account for 80% of all surf-related rescues. Most people, when they are or find themselves caught in a rip current, they begin to panic, and that really there quickly starts the drowning process. To demonstrate the dangers of these deadly currents, I decide to get in one. This longshore current near Mason's Inlet is... It's a rip current going sideways. Surrounded by safety, Wrightsville Beach Ocean Rescue has lifeguards watching from onshore and right next to me in the water. Well, going out, you immediately feel a pull um, and you drop down really quickly, too. I mean, look, if you try and walk backwards. Yeah, even this is hard. It looks like a workout. It's so magical. You're trying to swim in this. And even so, walking. Yeah, <laughs> this is going sideways right now. Uh -huh. But imagine this going out. We were out for maybe like five minutes, and I turned around, and you guys were just way in the distance. We tried swimming against it. We got nowhere. Why do you think fins are barely <laughs> making any progress? I don't think you can get back. I go back in for round two, and you can see just how quickly we are taken by the current. Take a look at the yellow surfboard the lifeguard is on, gliding without any paddling. From this view, you can also see a typical setup for a rip current, and that's a break between the sandbar, one to our right and one to our left, with a fast-moving channel of water in the middle. After a few minutes with arms up, a lifeguard comes to get me. You're just swimming in the same spot over and over and over again, and you just don't get anywhere, and that's kind of when the panic sets in. It's deep water, too, not to mention. And while you're panicking, you're still you're still drifting. It's not like you can just stop in one spot. And no matter how hard you try, you're, you're just going to keep going until you know someone comes out and rescues you. All the information on five guys named Mo on WECT.com. Cool. All right. Well, guess what? Mo, he on the way. He and humidity back in the forecast for the next couple of days. Or even if you have plans to go to the beach.